welcome chris welcome uh, we have uh, guys we have christoph uh, trap with us uh, uh, a long time supporter of cms asia he's been associated with us in various forms in the last 3 uh, 4 years um, to introduce him in a very very simple way uh, i would just say that if you're trying to learn content marketing and then if you're trying to scale your content marketing and when you're researching about content marketing if you don't come across christoph trap you are going in the wrong direction you will encounter christoph and his work that he has done his his insights his uh, his articles his videos if you don't come across them then you're definitely going in a wrong path so here's chris for you he he's here to speak about the power of audio and voice uh, in the realm of content marketing overall all yours chris Awesome. Hey, thanks for having me. Um thanks everyone. Uh, too bad we're all on virtual. Uh but thanks for COVID, right? 2020 in full swing. Um do you have the PowerPoint? Is it running? I don't see it yet. You want me to run it from here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Just give me a moment. Yeah, you bet. Well, we're waiting for the PowerPoint. The uh, I, I can do the first slide here, really briefly about me. I'm Christoph Trapp, uh, based uh, just west of Chicago. So right now it's 10:38 p.m. on Wednesday. Um, definitely an interesting setup. Uh, I've been podcasting, and I've also focused on on voice content the last year or so, roughly. uh spoke at content marketing world uh, about the about a similar topic on voice search um you can go ahead to the next one rp if you could and uh as rp mentioned i've done content marketing for probably the last decade or so grew up in in uh journalism uh but you know as as you just heard storytelling is really the future how do we tell stories how do we tell how do we get in front of people how do we stay relevant um so you can't just throw stuff at people but two ways to do that really is to focus on voice so we don't want to say hey you know insert voice assistant's name uh do whatever for me but those things are uh really taken off voice search and audio content as well go ahead please the three types that we want to talk about is uh, first of all is voice content search and devices so this is you know you ask your device to do something whether it's uh texting your daughter or you know adding something to a list or something like that uh but this is becoming more and more common and and if you say hey i don't even have a voice device today i don't either i use my phone quite frankly i have alexa on my phone you can it's kind of shown up uh, squiggly here but you uh, i have it on my phone alexa there's an app i got siri on my iphone um and you want to show up for that uh, for those devices as we're moving forward um then we have voice content so what what the difference is here is now we're talking about podcasting we're talking about audio content uh we'll get to that in a little bit more uh which is uh, live streams podcasting those kind of things and podcasting is interesting because it's uh, taken off again it's very interesting took off maybe 10 years ago and currently more and more companies are starting um podcasts and even in b2b and you know there is you guys were absolutely correct when we talked about uh it's all human to human um the biggest difference i think between b2b and b2c really is b2c customers they buy stuff it's just i'm sitting on my couch i need new shoes i buy them right b2b Uh, you got to convince a number of people like very few b2b companies they uh, they buy things just uh you know on a whim which is what b2c customers do but podcasting can really help you get in front of them as well just like for b2c customers so at the end of the day you're reaching human to human um and audio content can help you uh 
uh, show your authenticity. Or P and I, we've done a couple of live streams. We've done a couple of podcasts for CMS Asia, also from our own podcast, the Business Storytelling Podcast. And at the end of the day, you can tell whether the people are authentic, whether they know what they're talking about, whether you like them or not. So it's just something to keep top of mind. Uh, it can help you tell your story differently. It can help you show your authenticity. Go ahead to the next slide, please. Um, as it comes to voice search, there's really four different buckets to think about. One is the truly the, the voice search bucket. And this is where um, you're searching on your phone, you're asking Siri for, uh, you know, who is the best content marketer? Um, when can we travel again? What conferences are coming up in 2021? Anything you say to your phone. Um, and there's many, many different facets when it comes to that, quite frankly. Um, on Siri, on Alexa, you might get one result, but also if you're speaking to your phone and you just have Safari open, um, <coughs> you might get multiple uh, results. Um, even on Siri, sometimes you get multiple results. So if they don't, if she doesn't know what you're looking for, uh, she just gives you a number of results she found on the web. So it's just something to think about, but we do want to rank for that. And I'll, I know we have a limited amount of time, but I'll give you some tips on how to, how to make that work. What's interesting about voice search, you can't even tell whether or not it's working. Google doesn't tell you um, whether anybody is coming to your site through voice search. It just shows up as regular organic traffic. Um, certainly on your podcast, if you are doing a podcast, we'll talk about that a little bit more here. Um, it, it tells you, right? Whether it's a speaker, a smart speaker or not. Um, on some devices, on Google Podcasts, for example, but it doesn't tell you that across all the 19 podcast channels. The next one is voice production. I want to mention this one quickly, and I haven't done it as much this year because really, you know, I've been more, I've been home more, like like I think most everybody else, but I used to voice dictate my articles, and I just put my phone in front of my face, and I would talk to uh, to my audience, and and just voice dictate my content. Um, Scott and Sue, Susan Westwater, they wrote a book on voice strategy. They did the same thing. They voice dictated their, their, their book and then they went back and edited it. So just something to think about. Um, if you're not the, if you think of yourself as not the best writer, that's a good way to, to write something, to get a book out, to get content out. Writing still matters. Voice integration into apps. And this is one, uh, probably most of us will not use this necessarily as a strategy, but the reason I like to bring this up because you can use apps like Google um, Analytics, um, other apps like that, and the voice technology is integrated into that app. So what you can do is you can take your phone and you can open the Google Analytics app and say, hey, Google, what uh, happened on my website last month? Um, where are people coming from uh, in organic search? Those kind of things and go from there. So. Uh, that's just something to keep in mind. And then smart devices designed for voice. Most of us marketers probably won't build them, but it is kind of uh, good to know. That on the next slide, what you can see is everything we do, whether it comes to podcasting or voice content that we want to rank for in when people search for it by, by voice, you want to make it part of your COPE strategy. And when I talk about COPE, you've probably heard it before, create ones, publish everywhere. But how do you maximize um, all the content that you're creating for all the channels where you can use it? Uh, currently, I'm on the Instagram Reels bandwagon. Uh, I'm creating Instagram Reels and I try to use them in other places. Um, and when you look at the next slide here, um, when we go to that one, right, uh, we can go there now. Um, here's an example of how you do it with a podcast. And the, the reason we wanna use the COPE model is we don't have any more time, then you know there's no more time to go around. We can't create new content for every little channel. So how do we maximize the content we have? And I'll give you an example here. So when I do my podcast, uh, the business storytelling podcast, I go live on all these different channels, Twitter, Periscope, Facebook, LinkedIn, even Twitch now. Um, I'm not exactly sold on why I need to be on Twitch as a marketer, but why not, right? Why, I mean, why not give it a try, see what's working and, and what's not working. And then we have a conversation, you know, and then we record the thing at the same time. So I already hit a few hundred 
um, audience members right there without doing any uh, any additional content production work. You know, I, I hit, I don't know, depends on the day, depends on the topic, but could be, you know, 400 viewers or 300 or something like that. Then I take the audio from that content and uh, the video content, and I turn that into a podcast. So the podcast then goes to all these different channels. Uh, I do edit them, but I, I think some people overthink how much do we need to edit a podcast? Uh, you know, if you have the skills, do it. I edit it too, to an extent, but I don't overproduce it. Um, my highest performing podcast uh, was just me talking. I didn't even have a guest. Had like 40,000 um, 40, listens or something like that, 40,000 downloads. So at the end of the day, um, yes, you want quality. Yes, you want um, the right level of production value, but don't overdo it. Don't overthink it. Um, from there, I take the content. I also pushed it on Instagram. Uh, Instagram TV, um, some uh, the success there hasn't been the best necessarily, but from there I also take uh, the content and I turn it into articles. Um, you know, put it on my website, um, add it to other articles. For example, the other day I combined three podcasts into one big article, so it's like a 17-minute read about creativity. So instead of like just creating one piece of content for everything you do. Think about where it fits. How does it fit together and maximize things? Uh, the next few slides, if you want to uh, tab along or peep, the reason podcasting is important today, it's starting to show up in search. Uh, and it was interesting when this first was rolled out by Google, um, the, it was a marketing o'clock podcast and uh, I, I really enjoy listening to them, but they were saying, well, few people listen to our podcast on Google Podcasts. And, and I agree with them, uh, it's true. It's most of my listeners do not come through Google Podcasts because it is a newer platform. Most people use Apple, uh, you know, and then and Spotify and some people listen on the web as well. Um, but that's not the point. The point is that if you can't rank for a term with your written article, you might be able to rank with your podcast article. So. Um, not, not your podcast article, but your podcast episode. So if you go to the next slide there, it actually tells you uh, in Google Podcast Manager, how many people are searching and are finding your podcast. So just something to keep in mind, but I think it's a fantastic way to get in front of people. I think it's a fantastic way to, uh, to have a chance to be found. Um, and podcasts also... Uh, tie into voice search. So for example, I can tell my phone, hey, please play the Christoph Trapp business storytelling podcast. Um, you know, it can, um, that's another way to stand out there. How to get started on the next slide here. Super easy, uh, quite frankly. I mean, there is a lot of things you have to think about before you start. Got to make a plan. What are we going to talk about? Those kind of things. Um, and I'll talk about that in a little bit more here. But, but just go to anchor.fm, sign up for an account. Uh, switcherstudio.com is another one that I, uh, that I like to use um, for my recordings, especially the, the, the live video. But if you're just getting started the first few times, anchor.fm uh, distributes it to all the different channels. I'm sure there is other technology that you can use. Um, there's some, you have to, uh, some, some of those providers you have to pay for. Anchor is free. Somebody called it the YouTube of podcasting. I don't know if that's good or bad, but um, certainly that's an easy way to get going. Make a plan of what you're going to talk about. What's your topic? Uh, what's your name? Brainstorm the name. It's very important to have a name that people can remember. Uh, remember, I mentioned uh, people might ask their phone to play your podcast, and if they can't find it, super, super hard to do. Um, outline the topics. What are you going to talk about? What are the topics? And like even when our Pete came on my show, you know, we outlined the topic. What are we going to talk about? How does that fit in? I have to think about that. It can't be RP who is thinking about that. He doesn't, you know, there's been 230 episodes. He doesn't have every episode memorized. So we want to make sure not everybody talks about the same thing. Every once in a while, I get somebody pitches me and says, uh, I want to talk about storytelling. And I'm like, what about it? And they're like, the importance. I'm like, that's literally the only thing we ever talk about, right? You have to be more specific. So once you hop into the episode, which is the next slide, 
uh, there is a little bit of, it doesn't always sound like it, but there is a little bit of a um, formula that you use. So really I would recommend this kind of setup. When you come on, you have the opening, you welcome people. I always thank people for tuning in, et cetera, you know, whatever. Like, like I'm having a conversation. Thanks for listening, guys. We're currently doing an episode a day. Uh, yesterday, we talked about this. It's, a, you know, just like you're having a conversation. I would be uh, cautious about um, uh, references to time. So like I know I just said yesterday, and I just did that today, but I was recording a podcast about the U.S. election tied it to storytelling and content. Um, and then the other episodes, you know, they were recorded a long time ago. So uh, just something to be aware of. Uh, don't overdo it. Um, you know, I had somebody come on a show and they said, happy September. And that show ran in October. So uh, some of those things, you don't want to be too timely in your language, but uh, welcome people, tell them what you're going to talk about, give them an overview, and then have it structured. Topic one, topic two, topic three, talk about those topics. Go through the topics, but you don't have to overthink it. And I go on tangents. We go on tangents all the time. With Carlos Gill on the other day, and Carlos is a marketer, and he launched a company during COVID. Um, so we talked about that, and I we didn't even plan about that, right? Or maybe he did, but I didn't. And so that became like a subtopic in, in one area. At the end, make sure you have a wrap. Make sure you summarize some of the things you've talked about. Um, and, you know, give people um, options to to contact you or, or whatever it might be. If you have a call to action, make sure uh, it's also in the show notes. Make sure you got links in there. Like you can see on my slide here, my, my Twitter handle, my blog. I hope you check it out. I hope you connect. If you have questions, we don't get to it. Uh, feel free to tweet at me. Feel free to send me a message. But always have that in there. On the next slide here, you can actually see just very quickly how the setup looks. Um, this is how we record. This is how we live stream. Uh, and so we got our Twitter handles on there. And and it took me a little bit to get used to how do you produce it and talk at the same time and do all these other things. And you got comments coming in. So there is quite a bit of, um, of complexity involved, but make it easy on yourself. Don't overdo it. You, you know, I was switching back and forth like we're on TV. Why do I have to make it so complicated? Why do I have to set myself up to do that. So just uh, make it easy. On the next slide, we're talking about how do we, uh, you know, when you write content. And the, the biggest thing when it comes to voice, when it comes to um, uh, podcasting headlines, all those things, um, make sure it's conversationally. Don't be so over the top marketing, gobbledygooky, you know, write in a way that people actually want to read it. Um, same with your headlines, right? What can pull people in? The other thing, and I'm still surprised how many people I see that forget about this, do your keyword research for podcasts as well as writing. Uh, what are people searching for? What are the terms we're trying to go for? Um, please, it will help you long-term. It helps you be more strategic, helps you pick the right terms. And uh, podcasts are now starting to become indexed, as you saw earlier. So even me talking on a podcast, I need to use the correct terminology because I might rank for it when people search for it. So if I use the wrong terminology, not good for me. Just something to keep in mind, but do that research. Uh, when I go on shows, a lot of time I say, here's the topic we're trying to go after. Um, and, and we go from there, go deep into a topic. Um, there is ways to go deep into a topic. I mean, think about, we're just like, 10, 15 minutes here, right? It's how long we're talking, maybe 20 minutes. And, and we're still getting a lot of stuff in here. So just because you have little time or, or whatever, like you can still go deep. Other best practices in SEO, certainly use them as well. Uh, I know it's a lot of stuff we, we breeze through here. Um, if you have any questions, comments, judgments, haha, happy to consider them. If you wanna go to the next slide, um, RP, you can uh, WhatsApp me. If you like, uh, reach out to email if you have any questions on here. Uh, but I think those areas, they're definitely coming up, um, you know, along with virtual reality video. I think there might be a session on video later. Uh, but using new technology or emerging technology really can help you stand out. Um, and, you know, I just did, I did a pitch the other day. And I was the only one that sent a video. Everybody else sent a proposal. And I said, I'm just sending a video to stand out. 
am I the only one? And they said, yeah, you, you were. So uh, same with podcasting, same with ranking for all those different things. Um, and, you know, try to find a way to stand apart, which is really what marketers do. Thank you very much, Chris, uh, 